What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Barbells and Bangers. What's poppin'? What's going on, y'all? I have so many things I want to talk about today. So many different things. I don't know. I really like that I have... I guess this outlet to just kind of talk about like health, fitness, lifestyle, music, podcasts. Like I can just talk about whatever and um, it's a really good outlet for me. I I enjoy doing it. So thanks for your support because without your support, then I wouldn't be continuing to do this. So I appreciate you guys listening. Um, I also wanted to shout out Wellbeing Brewing. As always, I am sipping on a well-being non-alcoholic beer. This one is the Heavenly Body Golden Wheat that I'm sipping on right now. But they have other different types. They have IPAs. They have all kinds of stuff. So if you like non-alcoholic beer or you just want to try something different, uh, check out Wellbeing Brewing. Use my code Bree Eckert for 10% off. Uh, and when you do that, it helps me and it helps the podcast. Also check out Jocko Fuel. Uh, my code for that is Bree Bree, and that is going to be more uh, supplements and energy drinks and, and things like that. So thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. But anyway, let's get into the podcast. So uh, I'm also drinking some coffee because, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend and I don't drink. So I'm celebrating the way that I want to celebrate. Okay. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee at nighttime. I'm doing something that it's a little rebellious, guys. I'm being a little rebellious. I'm drinking coffee at nighttime. That is crazy. But here's why. So some people, they drink coffee at nighttime. And I used to be like this. I would drink coffee at night and I wouldn't be able to sleep. Like I wouldn't be able to sleep. But now I have this thing called chronic fatigue. And so I can sleep really at any moment. Like if you told me just to go to sleep at any point during the day, I'd probably be able to. So caffeine just doesn't have the same effect on me anymore. Unfortunately, I wish it did. Gosh, those were the days when I could just drink caffeine and I would just, it would like change my life, you know? (laughs) Now I got to do ice bath. I got to do coffee. I got to do freaking morning sunlight. I got to I got to it's insane. The I don't know. I'm like, dude, I just want to feel normal. I'm not even trying to feel amazing cuz I already already gave up on that. <laughs> a long time ago. I'm like, I just want to feel okay. Like I just want to feel normal, like not tired constantly. But it's all good. But I just thought that was funny. But um Yeah, I think one thing that I do kind of want to talk about, at least with, um, we'll start with like health and fitness stuff. So as far as health and fitness goes, um, one thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, nutrition and dieting and um, just overall um, food, I guess, is the topic, Um, but like on a budget and the reason I wanted to talk about that is because, you know, the economy right now is is tough. And a lot of people, including myself, are tightening up their, their budget. So, you know, I don't want to spend as much money when I go to the grocery store right now because I'm trying not to spend more than I possibly have to because everything is so expensive. Why is everything so expensive now? What happened? Even, like, I don't know. I want to say... I'm trying to think of the last time I got fast food. It's been a while now because I've been trying to avoid it. Um, It's probably been, I don't know, a couple months, a few months since I've had fast food. Um, Probably no longer than three months, I would say. Um, Because every once in a while I do get the occasional McDonald's, especially if I'm like out of town or or if I'm on a road trip. Like I always, I always get fast food if I'm on a road trip, usually. It's like, dude, it's not going to kill you. Um, some people who stick to their diet, like when they're out of town, it's like, why? I don't know. Unless you actually are like allergic to things 
It's like, which I kind of am. Like, I have lupus. So like, I have to be careful with, uh, you know, what I put in my body. But if it's only, like, a couple days, it's like, yeah, who cares? Like, when I'm out of town, my diet does not apply. I eat whatever the heck I want. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unless it's, like, a business thing where I have to, like, you know, have things that I'm responsible for. Cause then it's like, I don't want to like risk having like a stomach ache or like feeling like crap or something. Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, ADHD. Uh, I was talking about dieting, nutrition and all that stuff on a budget. So I just want to share, um, some tips and tricks that I've picked up that maybe can help you, um, with grocery shopping and just overall nutrition on a budget. Cause I think a lot of people think that I spend a lot of money on food and I really don't. Um, cause to be honest, I just, my budget right now, it's, it's tighter than it used to be. So it's like, yeah, you got to really be careful where you spend your money. And the thing is you don't want to not spend money on quality nutrition. You don't, it is an investment. I promise you. Um, so don't, don't go too cheap with, if you can't, if you can afford, you know, get what you can afford, but try to make sure it's as quality as possible. That's the main thing. Like quality is so important when it comes to food. But, um, and I think that is something that I've kind of been focusing on more. So it's like, okay, instead of buying a bunch of snacks that I'm going to binge on at nighttime when I'm hungry. Um, (laughs) instead of buying that, you know, maybe I spend the money that I would have spent on that and just maybe get a nicer cut of meat, or maybe I get the grass fed, um, or I get organic fruit or, you know, whatever. I just get a higher quality version or like with fish, like getting wild caught. It's so much better to get wild caught, um, than farmed for the most part. So yeah, I think, I think it's important. And I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. There's no difference between organic and non-organic. It's like, okay, like it's just whatever you believe you stick to that. But this is just how I am. Um, my personal, uh, views on nutrition. I like to get the higher quality, um, stuff. And I just, you know, I also, I'm buying things that aren't very expensive to begin with though. So like chicken thighs are not that expensive. Um, at least they're not expensive compared to buying like pre-made chicken tenders or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's cheaper to buy a pack of chicken thighs and it's going to last you longer and it's going to taste better. And yeah. So, um, chicken thighs is one thing that has been really helpful for me with kind of shopping on a budget because chicken thighs are not very expensive, at least compared to other types of meat that you could buy. Like steak is definitely more expensive. So I'll get a steak sometimes, like, I don't know, maybe once a week, once or twice a week. No, it's probably, it's probably closer to like twice a week. Sometimes I'll do it three to five days a week, but that's not very often. It's usually like two to three days a week that I have um, a steak and I'm not having like a freaking filet mignon every time. <laughs> like I'm having just a regular steak. <laughs> like you can get just regular, you know, steaks like sirloin stuff like that. Like you don't have to get an expensive steak to have a steak. Um, but lately I've been eating, you know, like ground beef, eating steak, eating chicken thighs as like my main sources of protein, I guess you could say. Um, and I also eat eggs and I've been getting pasture raised eggs. So I've been getting grass fed and grass finished, uh, beef and I've been getting pasture raised eggs and, um, the chicken thighs, I believe that I got the last time were free. Yeah, they were free range, whatever the new thing is now. I don't know. I can't keep up with all of them. But I try to get whatever like the quality is like I know grass fed and grass finished ground beef like you can tell the difference like that's the thing I try to explain to them like you can literally tell the difference and by the way the best um ground beef that I've found in like a regular grocery store so far is the force of nature 
uh regenerative beef regenerative beef gosh i can't talk um that's a that's a big word regenerative <laughs> the regenerative ground beef uh from force of nature it's in the frozen section i get it at, i got it at uh fresh time but they probably have it at whole foods i would imagine places like that like more like healthy store type stores um but it was delicious like it was so good I'm telling you, and all I put on it was salt and pepper. It was so fire. And this is like, I wish they would freaking sponsor me because I would actually talk about their stuff a lot because it is really good. But um, yeah, so that, that's one. So, and it's nice because it's frozen. So, you know, sometimes it's hard. Some people in certain areas may have harder access to um, quality meat. So it's frozen so they can ship it um easier i guess i don't know how that i don't know i'm not even gonna pretend i know how that stuff works because i really don't but but whatever but it was really good so i just i focus on getting like really good quality meat and then i get a lot of fruit and i try to be smart with the way that i buy it so um when i buy fruit i don't buy anything that's pre-cut or pre-anything i buy the whole fruit by it's like i want to cut it I want to do, you know, and yeah, like it takes like five minutes to cut a pineapple, but it's worth it because it tastes so much better when it's like freshly cut. And also I just don't trust, uh, the pre-cut stuff for some reason. I just don't trust it. I don't know why it's just me. I probably am just paranoid because I'm paranoid of food a lot of times. Like what is in my food? I'm like, I don't know what is in here half the time when I eat food. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't know how more people aren't paranoid about, but it's, it's okay. I try not to think about it too much. Cause I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be like one of those crazy, like people that's, I don't know, but it's really just because of my illness. It's not because like, if I didn't have an illness, I wouldn't be like that. I don't think, um, I think it's just because I can feel it so much more when something bothers me, um, and then, then a normal person, but Yeah. But anyways, another uh, budget friendly food is white rice. So if you go to Sam's or Costco, you can get like a huge bag of rice, huge bag of rice. And, um, I got a bag of rice. It was like 25, 25 pound bag of rice, I think for 10 bucks. Um, so yeah, check out Sam, you know, anywhere that's like a wholesale type store where they have like bulk items, get a big ass bag of rice. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, um, because rice is, it's not really like bad for, I mean, I don't know. There's probably somebody out there that's like, rice is the worst thing you put in your body. I don't know. I've never had any problems with rice, so whatever, but I'm probably going to start eating rice again. I took a break from all like grains and all kinds of stuff. I pretty much was just eating like meat, fruit, um, And then now I'm eating like meat, fruit, nuts, and well, I've been eating honey the whole time. Um, that's another thing. Honey, you can get, uh, in bulk really cheap too. Like it doesn't seem cheap because it's like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks for like a big bottle of honey, but it is because it lasts a long time. And also like I get, uh, local honey from the farmer's market because there's a farmer's market where I live. So if you have a farmer's market near you, then they might have local honey or like your local grocery store might have it. So, um, and honey, honestly, for how long that it lasts, I feel like it's really not that expensive. Um, and sometimes I just like to eat like a spoon of honey. It makes my throat feel better. I have really bad allergies. It helps with my allergies. So yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of honey. And what else do I get? I get, um, I got a uh, mango. I got a couple mangoes last time I went to the store and they were only a dollar. Um, so that's a good option. And then collard greens. Collard greens are at my grocery store. I think they're like a dollar sixty nine. They're under two dollars. And it was a pretty big bunch that I got. Um, The price will probably vary depending on where you are. But 
and depending on the store i've noticed the price varies but pretty cheap and usually one bunch will get me at least two to four uh servings so and i have big servings uh, because i like greens so i usually eat a lot of them um but yeah so that's one budget-friendly food um apples i feel like are pretty budget-friendly i eat a lot of apples now and i think it's good because whenever i eat apple i feel like it just gives me like a little boost of energy i don't know i think that's why i like to eat them um but also they're i mean they're not the cheapest fruit but they're not super expensive so i um I usually will at least get like a couple apples and I'll get avocado. Avocado is another one. And everybody says like the avocado toast thing. And it's like, that is not, avocados are not even expensive. When I lived in Austin, avocados were like 50 cents. Like avocados are not expensive at all. (laughs) They might be expensive in like some parts of the country. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. I don't know. At one point, that was like a whole thing. People were saying that millennials were broke because they eat avocados. And it's like, dude, avocados are not even that expensive. But whatever. Whatever. But yeah, I like to eat avocados because I don't eat that much like at a time. I like to have a bunch of different things on my plate, though. So like usually in the morning, I'll get like three or four different types of fruit and cut it up. And... I don't know, sometimes I'll have Greek yogurt and granola or something like that, but lately I haven't been having that because I've been just kind of taking a break from that kind of stuff. Um, but, and then I'll also have uh, usually like eggs or some type of protein, usually eggs. And then, I don't know, whatever, whatever else I want. <laughs> it just depends on what I have in my fridge and what season it is, you know. But right now I've been eating a lot of fruit because a lot of fruit is in season right now. So I like to eat a lot of fruit when, you know, it's summertime. I feel like summertime is like the fruit season. I mean, it's not summertime yet. It's still spring technically, but it's almost, it feels like summertime because it's getting really warm outside. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other budget friendly foods oh get like a giant thing of trail mix those are good um because you can usually get a lot of it for really cheap and I feel like trail mix like fills me up pretty well like if I just need like some energy or I need um just to curb like some sugar cravings like having a handful of I don't know cashews or something or trail mix or whatever um or I like to eat chocolate too I like chocolate just like dark chocolate by itself is really good but yeah I don't know I'm trying to think of some other budget friendly foods I'm trying to think of like whenever I was like when I first got my own apartment, like what I, cause we used to go to the farmer's market in Soulard and the Soulard farmer's market is freaking lit. If you've never been there, I want to go to the, Su- okay. If somebody wants to go to the Soulard farmer's market, if, if like, if you're my friend, not if you're just some random person, but if like you, you're like my friend and you want to go, uh, hit me up, dude, because I want to go to the freaking farmer's market. Let's go. Let's freaking go. I mean, I like the Lake St. Louis Farmer's Market. You know, that one's cool. But the Soulard Farmer's Market is lit. I don't know. Or if you guys have any Farmer's Market recommendations. Ooh, you know what would be a cool vlog? Maybe I'll do this one day when I have some time and save up a little bit of money to go on a little trip. But do a little road trip and go to different farmer's markets and like vlog different farmers markets that would be fun go to like the top farmers markets in the country that would be fun i see i want to do stuff like that like that's the type of content i i really want to do is like some travel content and like going to check out different farmers markets going to check out different restaurants different gyms i don't know that's like cool stuff i want to do 
at some point. Not right now. Because I don't ha- I ain't got time. Also, I have a dog. I got to take care of my dog. And I don't like to leave her. So I would want her to come with me if I was traveling. It takes a little bit more planning. It's like having, you know, well, it's not like having a kid. But, you know, you know what I mean. I'm not saying my dog is my kid, but you know what I mean. I got to keep track of her. And she needs my attention. Um, anyways, moving on. I hope that I at least gave you some ideas for shopping on a budget. I went to the grocery store the other other day and I only spent $7. And I got like five different things. I got like a mango. No, I got like two mangoes and I got a pineapple and I got, what else did I get? Um, what else did I get? I don't remember. Oh, I got a chocolate bar. I think. And collard greens. I think that's all I got. There was something else. Maybe sweet potatoes. I don't know. I don't remember. But I only spent $7. Because um, I was just like in the area. And I was like, oh, I need a couple things. And I kind of like that. Like going to the store um, more frequently. But getting like just a few things each time. I don't know. Because I feel like sometimes I go on a whole grocery haul and then I don't eat half the stuff. So I'm trying not to waste anything. Like I'm trying to really um, eat all the food that I buy and not waste anything. Because I just feel bad wasting food. I don't know. But anyways, um, I think I'm going to change my workout split. So I'm going to take a week off because it's been eight weeks now or roughly eight weeks, eight, nine weeks somewhere around there. Uh, since I changed my split, I've been doing a full body split for, let's see. Yeah. A couple months now. Cause that would be like eight weeks. So yeah, it's been a couple months since I started this, um, full body split three days a week. So I'm going to switch it up now. I'm switching it up guys. And I'm going to do I think I'm going to do an upper lower split and then add another day. So I'm going to add a day just for glutes. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to really focus on glutes for a little while because I was focusing so much on upper body for the longest time. So now I'm going to focus on lower body again because I feel like it really does help my uh, hip mobility when I focus on lower body, when I strengthen my glutes and really just focus on it. So that's why I want to have a whole day that's just dedicated to glutes. Um, And maybe I'll do like some glute workout videos if I have time. Guys, please keep in mind those videos take so long to make. So that's why I don't do them as much anymore because it's like I don't really have time to do. um, It's it's so much stuff. But I do want to do more of them because I do enjoy making those videos. They're really fun to make, but they just take a long time, unfortunately. But I do want to make um, some workout videos, so maybe I will in the near future if I have time. But yeah, so I'm going to do upper lower. And I love doing upper lower splits, but I wanted to just add a little something. I don't know. I just want to add a little something, something to it. Glutes. Glutes, baby. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. And... We'll see how it goes. I'm still doing ice bath at least a couple days a week too. So I'm going to keep doing that. I think the ice bath really does help me. And I don't know. I might try doing it daily again at some point. It's just such a pain in the butt. (laughs) Because some days it's just like I don't have time to like set up the ice bath. So it's just, yeah. If 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 I had one of those like fancy ice baths then maybe it'd be a little bit more realistic for me to do it every day. But I don't know. We'll get there. (laughs) Baby steps. At one point I was doing it every single day and it was awesome. And I think it was really helping me. So I might, might try to do that again. I don't know. But yeah, so I'm changing my workout split. And, um, I wanted to talk about glutes, uh, for a second. Because um, that's something I feel like a lot of people are focusing on right now and have been for a while. And instead of posting 10,000 videos of my butt, 
I'd rather just talk about it and tell you guys what has helped me with growing my glutes. Um, Because at one point, growing my glutes was like my main priority. And I mean, not my main priority. Like I was still doing upper body, lower body. Like I was still doing everything else. But I really was focusing on it because I was trying to improve my mobility in my hip. And also, you know, to look good too was a little bit of a part of it. But for the most part was um, I had a really bad like imbalance in my hips. In, uh, and I still kind of do. So I'm still trying to fix it. And sometimes it takes a long time to fix those muscle imbalances and sometimes it comes and goes and sometimes it's for a while I didn't really have any issues um and then lately I think it's because I've been doing more cardio lately and usually when I do cardio is when I get hurt I don't usually get hurt uh doing lifting which people people all the time think I'm you know getting hurt doing lifting I'm like no I don't because that's not how I train I train to not get injured because I don't ever want to stop training and Peter Atia was just talking about this on, um, I don't know if it was his podcast or another podcast, but he was talking about how it's so important to train not to get injured because you really can't afford to not train because you're going to lose muscle mass if you don't, um, at least do the minimum effective dose of resistance training. So I thought it was really interesting hearing him kind of talk about that. Um, cause yeah, I think you should take it that seriously, but I think some people take it a little too far, um, as far as like the intensity. And sometimes I do, honestly, there, there are some times that I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm like, I sh I shouldn't be going this hard, but like, you might see me like stay at the same weight on a squat for months before I, I move up and it's, it's I'm really careful with those heavy compound movements. I don't like to take any chances. I'd rather slow down my progress than take chances and, and risk getting injured. But that's just me. And the thing is, it's because I'm not I'm not competing in any anything where having an impressive squat is going to really help me. So do I want to improve my squat? Of course. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, right now I can squat my body weight, so... I mean, I feel like that's pretty good for somebody who my entire life doesn't revolve around the gym. <laughs> I mean, I go through phases. Like there are some phases where like I really focus on the gym, but I, I don't train to be like a power lifter. Like I don't really do that style of training just because, like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to uh, take any chances with my training. So... But I am going to start deadlifting again because I did deadlifting for like, I don't know, a couple months. And then I kind of just like, I don't know, I didn't really put it in my routine because I had a, I don't know, I think I just had like too much going on because it was three days a week full body. So it's like, how, how many exercises can you possibly fit into three days a week? You can only do so much. So that's why I'm I'm changing my split to upper lower because I there's some stuff I want to work on that I just think it's easier to split it up into a split like that, like an upper lower split, and balance your recovery with your training and yeah, because I'm I'm big on recovery. I like to make sure that my muscles are recovered, and I just yeah I don't want to don't want to get injured. That's why it's important to take care of yourself. So I'm going to take a week off um, and that'll be, that'll be nice, but I'm going to still, you know, maybe go for some morning jogs with the dog and of course walk the dog every day and um, I don't know, whatever I feel like doing. And then I'll be right back at it in a week. And, and for those of you who don't know, I, uh, every couple months I take a week off the gym just to reset. I don't know. It works really well for me. So that's how I'm able to stay so consistent. Um, but sometimes I'll still go to the gym. Like I give myself the week off, but sometimes I just go to the gym anyways. So I let myself, I give myself the option not to go, but, but you know what? I'll probably end up at the gym in like three days. <laughs> 
<laughs> doing something. I don't know. Um, but sometimes like that week is a time for me to go to the gym and not go to the gym to like do a workout, but go to the gym to like work on some technique. Like sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll go to the gym and just do a bunch of different exercises and maybe like test my strength on them a little bit or just work on my technique or I don't know, maybe I'll go hit the heavy bag. Like, I don't know. There's all types of stuff that I, I can do, but yeah, I'm going to change my split to upper lower and then I'm going to add a day for glutes. And I did a similar split to this around the same time last year. That was when I did the Jeff Nippard program. I did his uh, glute hypertrophy program and it worked. It worked. My glutes blew up pretty fast. Um, but it was intense. It was, it was not easy. Like that was a really tough program. And I ended up doing it basically twice because the first time I did it, I got COVID. Um, so I didn't finish it. So then I started it over again at a later date, like a couple months later. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing with my training. Switching it up. It's good to switch it up. I'm telling you, it, it really does. Because sometimes if you do the same thing over and over again for too long, you get bored and then you start to lose that motivation to go to the gym a little bit. And it's like... Yeah, like we don't we don't want that to happen. We don't need that. But yeah. All right. I'm going to go my coffee's cold, so I got to go warm up my coffee and get a little bit more coffee. So I didn't drink it fast enough. I always do that. I never drink my coffee fast enough. So I got to make sure I drink my coffee fast enough when I come back. All right. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I got my coffee. All right, what am I going to talk about now? Oh, gosh. Oh, before this, I was watching... Oh, my gosh. I was watching the Full Send podcast, which is, like, I think one of the biggest podcasts right now on YouTube. Um, sorry, I'm yawning. Uh, <laughs> so Theo Vaughn was on it. Theo Vaughn, gotta love him. You gotta love Theo Vaughn. And I saw the comment, uh, I put it in my story because it was just, it made me laugh. Um, Mike Tyson commented on it on YouTube. It was like, I love this Theo guy. Oh my 
my gosh. Just hilarious. Theo is the best. Honestly, he's probably my favorite podcaster right now, I think. I just really enjoy listening to his podcast. I like the solo episodes. I like the guest episodes. Um, He's just great. He's great at podcasting. And I don't think he realizes how good he is at it. I think that's the crazy thing. He doesn't realize it. But he's really good. Um, But I like that he is always like looking to learn and grow and try new things and get out of his comfort zone. That's something that I've noticed about Theo Vaughn is that he really does do that. And he's also a very curious person. And I feel like that's how I am too. And I think that's why podcasting, I think that's why I enjoy it so much because I am curious. Um, And it's also just an outlet for me to kind of get my thoughts out and... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting way to express yourself. It really is. It's it's something else. But yeah, Theo's great at it. Um I'm trying to think what they talked about. They talked about all kinds of stuff cuz it's Theo. I mean, the guy is a content machine. Like anytime that guy's in front of a microphone, he's going to say something that you know, get over a million views on TikTok or Instagram or anything, any platform. Like he's, that's the thing. He's popular on like every platform. It's, it's insane. And he's a comedian. I love that. I love that comedians like Theo Vaughn, you know, a guy from Louisiana is getting recognition. <laughs> It's exciting. But, um, yeah, they talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, I didn't really watch all of it because I was cooking dinner. And I was like, I don't know. I was just doing all kinds of different things. Like, I was on my phone. I was cooking dinner. And, you know, I wasn't fully paying attention. So, I'm probably going to watch it again. But, um... Yeah, from what I heard, it was funny. And from what I saw, it was good. It was good. And I didn't finish it yet, so I still have more of it to watch. But yeah, anytime anytime Theo is on a podcast, I'll watch it for sure. But uh, one thing that they were talking about was the Rolling Stone list. Let me, let me see if I can find it. It was some kind of Rolling Stone list. Like Rolling Stone the magazine. It was like a... um, Here it is. The 20 most influential creators right now. From innovative vloggers to controversial streamers... To bona fide TikTok stars, here are the people making a splash on social media. Here we go. Let's let's read this. Let let's react to this article that the Rolling Stones, not the Rolling Stones, not the band Rolling Stone. Okay. How do you measure a creator's influence? There are endless ways to answer that. On one side is hard data from views and subscribers to sponsorships and revenue. Then there are the intangibles like how a creator chooses, how a creator uses their chosen platform, whether it's long form videos, short form vertical clips or live streams. To tell stories in unique and authentic ways for Rolling Stones inaugural most influential list. We weighed all of these factors then argued and debated to arrive at the 20 creators who are pushing the mediums forward and making it impossible to turn away. Okay, let's see who is on the list. I'm not going to read all this stuff. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Adam W., the leading man. 19 million followers on TikTok. That's a lot of followers. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know who this guy is. So he might... I don't know. He might be like really influential, but I don't I don't know who he is. 
So he hasn't popped into my algorithm. So maybe it's just content that I probably wouldn't like. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe I would like it and maybe the algorithm is stupid. I don't know. You know, you really just don't even know. We don't know anything. Okay, the next one is Alex Cooper, the Celebrity Whisperer. Five million listeners per episode on Spotify. Yeah, Alex Cooper is very influential, I would say. And she she really, like, she did something really important for women podcasters um, with her deal with Spotify because she made a lot of money. She made $60 million. She's the highest paid female podcast host on Spotify. Okay, here's the next one. Amelia de Moldenberg, the 21st century flirt. 2.9 million followers TikTok. Yeah, I don't know who she is. I don't know. I have no idea. Next one. Botez sisters, the chess champs. 1.2 1.2 million followers on Twitch. Oh, I don't I don't watch Twitch. How do people watch all this content? I don't have time. I don't know who these girls are. I like their outfits. They're cute. But I've never Are they gamers? Oh, they're trained in chess. This actually sounds kind of dope. I don't know. I'll look it up later. Code Miko, the virtual virtuoso. 926,000 followers Twitch. Yeah, so I've never heard of them. Never heard of them. The D'Amelio sisters, the crossover queens. 205.7 million followers on TikTok. That's a lot of followers. Wow, 205 million. Jeez. I don't know who they are, though. But I don't really get on TikTok anymore. Drewski. Okay, I know Drewski. He was on Theo Vaughn's podcast. The Hip Hop Sidekick. I like Drewski. 5.6 million followers. Okay. Yeah, I like Drewski. Dylan Mulvaney, the changemaker. Obviously, everybody knows Dylan Mulvaney by now. If you don't, you've probably been living under a rock. Uh, 10.8 million followers on TikTok. Okay. Elsa Majimbo, the hilarious homebody. 2.4 million followers. She's a comedian from Kenya. I'll have to check her out. Never heard of her, though. Uh, Josh Richards, everybody... I think uh, that watches like Barstool and stuff like that and knows Josh Richards. The Himbo Mogul. 26 million followers on TikTok. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. He's really good at uh, doing content. Kai Sinat. I don't know how to pronounce the name. The Merry Prankster. 4.7 million subscribers on Twitch. Huh. KB Lame. Oh, I've seen this guy. He has 156 million followers. Wow, I didn't realize he had that many followers on TikTok. Okay. Laron Hines. Yeah, I don't know who this is either. Logan Paul. Okay, finally, I... <laughs> I feel like an old lady. I don't know any of these people. I'm like, oh my gosh. Should I know these people? (laughs) I hope I don't seem like an old lady after this. Logan Paul, the original bad boy. 23 million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, Logan Paul's a beast. Honestly, like his, his podcast is really good. It's, it gets a lot of attention. Like you can't deny that. It doesn't matter if you like Logan Paul as a person. But he's really good at, you know, podcasting. He's really good at YouTube. Uh, Monet McMichael, the beauty boss. Three million followers on TikTok. Yeah, I haven't haven't heard of her either. Mr. Beast. Yeah, I've heard of Mr. Beast, obviously. 
Um, I don't really watch those types of videos, like those viral. Vi I don't really watch that type of stuff, so I'm not. I I have a lot of respect for Mr. Beast for like what he's done, like for YouTube, but um, that's not really the type of content I, I really watch. Uh, Northwest. That's Kanye West. Yeah, okay. That's their kid. 15 million followers. Dang. These people are famous. Olivia Dunn. I've heard of her, but I don't, I don't know her. That reminded me of Mariah Carey. I don't know her. <laughs> that was funny. I need more coffee. Yeah, I feel like I don't know any of these people on this list. And that's really concerning to me. Teffy, the cool big sister. I don't know. I don't know her. Valkyrie, the groundbreaking gamer. Three, 3.9 million subscribers on YouTube. That's impressive. That's a lot of subscribers for YouTube. But yeah, I don't really know uh, a lot of those people, to be honest, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I didn't realize that uh, Rolling Stone started talking about creators. That's kind of cool. Because there's some people out there that are making really incredible stuff um and they don't get they don't get the views they don't get the views or it's they get views but they don't get views on like a massive level like like logan paul for example like he gets a lot of views no matter what he does doesn't matter what he does he could post paint drying and it would get views it doesn't matter because he has a platform but um some people don't. But he does a lot of short form content. And I think that's how a lot of people are getting a platform now. It seems like short form content is just the way to get exposure, I guess. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. But anyways. Um... Oh, I was listening to Andrew Huberman's podcast and he said something interesting. He said, let me pull it up because I wrote it down or I typed it in my notes. I didn't write it down. Oh, yeah. He said there is a scientist. Listen to this, guys. He says there is a scientist. This is this is from Andrew Huberman's podcast. He said there is a scientist out there that can predict divorce with a 94% accuracy rate. What? So this guy apparently can, I guess, I guess he's like studying these couples, married couples. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to, you know what? I'm going to have to uh, listen to that episode again. But because I really am curious about this. <laughs> because <laughs> it's it's crazy guys so he apparently can predict divorce with a 94 percent accuracy rate of being like hey this couple's gonna get divorced or no this couple's not gonna get divorced apparently he's i don't know there's a system out there i guess i don't know that's really interesting though i'm like can this guy just like referee the dating apps you know <laughs> Like, every day he just goes in there and just, like, looks at people's conversations and he's like, nope. And then he just unmatches them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, dating apps. What a disaster. Yeah. Mm, no. Dating I don't do dating apps anymore. I haven't done dating apps for a long time. Yeah, no thank you. I'm good on that. Uh, yeah. No, 
not for me also like I have a dog so I don't really have a social life which is fine with me like it's fine like but I went to the fights this weekend I went to the fights I went to open mic night oh that was fun yeah so like I'm trying to have a social life okay I'm trying to get out there trying not to be a hermit um you know because it's hot girl summer so I gotta get out of the house a little bit I do love staying home though. Staying home is great. Cause I'm just tired. People don't understand when you get older, your body breaks down and you get tired and you don't want to go out anymore. I never thought this would happen to me, but it did. So here we are. Um. yeah yep 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 so another thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that not everybody is trying to uh, make the gym their entire life I feel like this is something that we need to talk about it has come to my attention (laughs) I mean, I just, some people just, I'm not going to say anything, but I think people need to understand that, uh, yeah, not everybody wants to like compete in fitness and not everybody wants to be an inf- a fitness influencer. Not everybody wants to, um you know, be a power lifter. Like some people, they they just want to go to the gym and do it to just take a step to be healthier. You know, they just want to be overall healthier person. And I think sometimes people, I don't know. I don't know. They just like promote this like very intense approach to fitness and uh, most people for most people that doesn't work long term I've found so and there are some people that they can handle a lot of different things and that's great but uh, for a lot of people you know we have other demands in life or challenges um, to where we can still go to the gym and be consistent because I think as long as you're Doing resistance training and you're doing it consistently um, at least a couple days a week, then I think you're doing just fine. Um, Because, yeah, not everybody needs to make the gym. And I think for some people, um, you know, maybe that could be even holding them back from doing some other things that they love to do. Um, or maybe it's taking time away from just like having time for yourself, uh, besides the gym. So, and that's one thing that sometimes I like to kind of ease up on my training. Um, you know, every few months or so, you know, kind of go in, in seasons, uh, with my training. And I don't know, I think that helps because sometimes it is fun to, really go hard for like a couple months and really focus on it. And then, you know, other months it's good to just kind of check it off your to-do list and, and just make sure that you did, um, you at least did the whole workout. Like you didn't, you didn't have bad form. You didn't get sloppy. You didn't, you know, rush through it. Like sometimes I'll rush through workouts. Like every once in a while I have like a bad week And then I'll just like rush through my last workout of the week. And I'm like, why did I, why did I do that? Like I just wasted my workout. Like I could have had a good workout, (laughs) but it's okay. Things happen. You can't be, nobody's perfect, especially not with the gym. But, um, yeah. So I just want to say that the gym does not have to be everybody's number one priority. 
Just saying. Just saying. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is just kind of what is self-care? Because um, sometimes you'll see people talk about self-care and I don't know. I don't know. I think we just don't really know what that term means. I think a lot of people throw it around, but nobody really knows exactly what it is. So I want to talk about it. Um, and I think the gym is part of self-care. I think the gym is a very important part of self-care and that's why I wanted to bring it up. And I actually talked about this on another episode with Emily. So she's a friend of mine and she actually is a therapist. So this is her wheelhouse. Um, and she was talking about how, you know, going to the gym really is um, one of the truest forms of self-care because you're, you're taking care of your body and taking care of your body is taking care of yourself. So if you're not taking care of your body, if you're getting wasted every weekend, if you're, you know, just eating really bad, you're not paying attention to your diet, things like that. If you let that get out of control, um, it can have real consequences. And those are, those are things that I've done in the past that I've had to overcome and get better at, um, avoiding situations like that. Um, you know, cause you know, it's okay to, to drink, have a few drinks once in a while, but if you are at the point where, you know, it's making you sick or like you're having physical side effects from it, then to me, it's just, I don't know, for me, it's not worth it. Um, so that's why I, I try to eliminate things in my life that cause me any sort of physical discomfort or, or things that have like mental effects. So things that affect me negatively mentally. And that doesn't have to be substances either. Like, um, like I stopped going on TikTok cause I just felt like it was kind of not good for my mental health. Um, I don't know. I, I still post on TikTok sometimes. I'm really lazy with it, but I don't like to go on TikTok. And here's the problem even with posting on TikTok. So in order to post on TikTok, you have to uh, stay in the app until it's done uploading. And they're, they're starting to do that on Instagram too. Um, YouTube shorts, they don't do that. So you can literally upload a video to YouTube Shorts and you can close the app and it'll upload in the background so you don't have to stay in the app. But I think the reason they do it on TikTok is because they want to keep you in the app. They want to keep you consuming content in the app. So they force you to stay in the app in order to participate in their platform. So you can't post and ghost. You can't, you got to say... You got to stay in the app. And then by the time it's done uploading, you're like clicking through all kinds of stuff and going down rabbit holes. So I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. I just feel like it's, oh, people are getting brainwashed by things on TikTok. I don't know. It scares me. There's, I think there's a lot of great stuff on TikTok. Like there are things on TikTok that I really like, but they're, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like it's for people with mental health issues. Maybe it's not the best. In my opinion, that is just my opinion. I don't know. But yeah, so. I don't know. This is the battery to my camera. When my camera battery dies. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I was talking about why the gym is self-care or what, what is self-care? So I think self-care is, um, saying no to things also. I think self-care is also kind of just like protecting your energy and I'm sorry if I sound like a 
a weirdo if I sound like I've lost my mind, but I'm talking about just like your, um, your mindset, your, your energy. Um, sorry. I have like hair on my microphone. I'm trying to get it off here. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah. So like you got to protect your energy. And what I mean by that is when you have people around you that are just feeding you negativity constantly, it, um, it's really hard on your mental health. And so I think one form of self-care is just learning how to set boundaries with people. And this is something I'm still trying to get better at. Um, and not allowing people to continue to take advantage of you or allowing people to continue to, um, you know, manipulate, lie, whatever, whatever it is, whatever's going on. Um, the less of that that you can allow in your life, then, uh, the better you're going to feel. So limiting interaction with negative people is something that, that's something I really want to get better at. Definitely. Um, also being a little bit more selective of the people that I associate with because, you know, sometimes you trust somebody and then it's like, oh, okay, interesting. I don't know. Or you help somebody and then they just like don't even appreciate it. Like that's, ooh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like at least show that you appreciate me helping you if you're gonna ask me to help you I don't know I always try to make sure that if somebody helps me that I try to at least tell them like hey thank you I appreciate you whatever I don't know I think it's important to let people know that you appreciate them which is something I also want to get better at um but yeah I don't know. I think self-care, yeah, it's just realizing that um, you get to control a little bit of um, what you tolerate. You know, you get to control what you tolerate. And that doesn't mean that you're not ever going to get taken advantage of. And that doesn't mean that people aren't ever going to screw you over or whatever. But, um, But if you can control what you tolerate as much as possible then it's less likely that you're going to have um, interactions like that. And that's something that I I really do need to remind myself. Um, but yeah, I think self-care is just limiting negativity in general. Also, um, the content that you consume. So not just the people around you, but also the content that you consume. Are you consuming content that is lowering your... Um, your energy, um, content that is maybe a little toxic. I've done it. There have been times where I caught myself where I was consuming a lot of content that was, that was toxic. That was making me a little toxic. Um, so you got to be careful with that too, or the people around you. There was a time in my life that I was around a lot of really toxic people. Um, or even just one toxic person. And I saw a quote recently and it was something like, I don't fear having no friends. I fear having bad friends. And I think that's really, really true because you really just can't, you can't trust just anybody anymore. And that's something I'm, I'm definitely learning a lot about. Um, and I continue to learn and you get better at, you know, but sometimes you just never know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because I always try to see the good in people. And I don't know. <laughs> I just, I need a better BS detector sometimes, you know. Some, some days I just feel like somebody turned off my BS detector and I'm like wow why did I not see that (laughs) 
But um, yeah. So they also were talking about Mark Zuckerberg doing jujitsu on the Full Send podcast with Theo Van. I do remember them talking about that. I don't remember what they said about it, but I don't know. I kind of want to talk about that. It is kind of funny that Mark Zuckerberg is doing it. It is kind of funny. I don't know how I feel about Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not... Uh, I don't know. He kind of gives me the creeps, to be honest. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, but I... It kind of made me respect him a little bit more than when I saw that he was doing jujitsu. Honestly, it did kind of make me respect him more. So, because he's like doing something out of his comfort zone. And I think more people need to do that. I think more people need to get out of their comfort zone. Um, it's something that I do on a regular basis. Should I do it all the time as often as I do? Probably not. But what are you going to do? That's just how I am. Okay. I just do whatever I feel like doing. Um, but yeah, I think it's cool that he's he's doing it. I think it's probably smart um, for him to do. And I think I think it's great for martial arts. It's great for martial arts because as somebody as famous as Mark Zuckerberg doing jujitsu is only going to make the sport more popular. Um, so when more people that have such a big platform, and he literally created Facebook. Literally created it. Um, so people like that doing jujitsu, it's going to attract a lot of people to jujitsu. So maybe another like tech nerd is going to become like the next jiu-jitsu star the next gordon ryan you know i don't know <laughs> it's just funny but i think it's good for the sport i think it's a good thing i think we should be celebrating that um happening because yeah it brings eyeballs to the sport which is what we need we need people watching the sport oh <sighs> Oh, you know another thing I wanted to talk about? Steroids. Not because I want to talk about steroids, because I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't do steroids, and I don't think for a lot. I don't think a lot of people really need to do them. I think they're. They're not necessary. Like, you can still get pretty jacked without doing steroids. I mean, you can tell when somebody's natural versus somebody that's not natural. Like, it does make a difference, but that's more for, like, competition. Like, if you're doing competition, that's a time where you might want to consider stuff like that. Because in those competitions, it's like, if you're not on anything, then you're like the only person that's not. And you're at a huge disadvantage when it gets to that elite, like if you're like Chris Bumstead, you know, and like the elite level, um, then they have to start getting into that. But if you're just going to the gym, like, I don't know, like a lot of guys are on like TRT and stuff, I guess. I don't know. I don't really know much about it. Cause I'm a woman. I don't really pay attention to, that kind of stuff because it doesn't really apply to me I mean I, I try to pay attention to it a little bit just from like a health perspective just so I understand it but um I don't really I don't know I don't know like what the benefits of TRT are besides obviously raising testosterone levels but I don't know what the side effects are so I think there are like some potential side effects so I don't know my freaking oh my hip hurts it's always when I'm like sitting down for a long period of time, like my hip will hurt a little bit. So I'm trying to get comfy. I need to like stretch my leg out. Oh, that feels way better. Yeah, I need to just stretch my leg out. 
So now I'm good. I've been doing pot. I feel like I've been doing podcasts all day. Gosh. Cause like, I don't have time to do it during the day. Like I've been trying to get stuff done earlier in the day, but it's impossible. I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to try. At least I was prepared this time. At least I had topics prepared. Last time I had no topics prepared. I literally just sat down and turned the freaking camera on and recorded. I was like, what am I doing? This is crazy. But it was because I was preparing so much to start the new podcast that like all my energy went to that. And then I had like no energy left by the time I started. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm going to have to get better at balancing the two. It's tough. It's, it's yeah. Um, but you know what you gotta, you gotta keep improving. You gotta constantly be improving. You always have to be growing, challenging yourself, improving. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm all about, baby. And it was fun. I got to go to the fights and cover the fights this weekend. So that was cool. Um, yeah, going to the fights is fun. If you've never been to the fights, you should go. You definitely should. Oh, I was going to look up that um, study. If I can find it, I should have bookmarked it. There's a study that I wanted to look at. Oh, yeah, here it is. Anabolic steroid use disorder. Is this PubMed? Oh, National Institutes of Health. That's where this article is from. Androgen use has become a major public health concern due to the transition of use of androgens from strictly sports to a much wider spectrum of the population. What I'm talking about, like regular people are doing steroids, people that don't compete, people that don't do sports, people that are just going to the gym and taking selfies. What are you doing? Anabolic Androgenic steroids are steroidal androgens, which include natural androgens such as male sex hormone, testosterone, or could be synthetic to mimic the action of the endogenous male hormone. Some people misuse anabolic steroids for various reasons. For example, athletes abuse anabolic steroids to enhance performance and prolong endurance. Non-athletic people misuse anabolic steroids to increase body weight and lean muscle mass without increasing fat mass in the body. A la selfies. The potential side effects of anabolic steroid use are significant and healthcare providers should be aware of patients at risk of anabolic androgenic steroid misuse. This activity describes the evaluation and management of anabolic steroid use disorder and highlights the role of the interprofessional team in managing patients with this condition. Objectives. Identify the at-risk patient populations for anabolic steroid use disorder Review the legitimate medical issues, or no, medical uses for anabolic steroid therapy. Outline the treatment and management options available for patients exhibiting signs of anabolic steroid misuse disorder. Explain the importance of improving care coordination among the interprofessional team to enhance delivery of care for patients presenting with anabolic steroid misuse disorder. Yeah, I think this is an important topic right now because there are a lot of young people... Um, it seems like that are getting into this type of thing, which is always a concern, um, when we want to make sure that kids are staying safe. So I think it's important that we, um, you know, we try to eliminate as much steroid misuse as possible. Um, cause it is a health risk. It really is. The prevalence of AAS abuse has steadily increased over the last two decades. Due to the increasing prevalence, the potential health hazards of anabolic steroids are also rising. A meta-analysis of 187 studies demonstrated that being athletic and or male were significant predictors of AAS abuse. The prevalence in males is 6.4% compared to 1.6% in females. That number will probably get higher, though, on the female side, because I've noticed that it seems like there's a trend with females using steroids, too. I don't know. That's just what I've noticed, but I don't have the data. Um, they they have the data. So 
Eventually, we'll find out. But science takes science takes time, so that's okay. Um, predominantly seen in male weightlifters in their twenties or thirties is who is like the biggest population of the steroid misuse. Continues to be a concern among high school students. Yeah, that's what I worry about. That's what I worry about. Oh, no. Of concern was that as high... Okay, here we go. The method of choice for administration for the majority of AAS users, 99.2% with self-administrable injections. Of concern was that as high as 13% reported unsafe practices for injecting the steroids, such as sharing needles, reusing needles, and sharing vials. Ooh, that's a big no-no. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Do not do that. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's concerning. Jesus. 13%. Yeah, this is this is something that I think we need to talk about a little bit more. I don't know if I'm the right person to talk about this because I'm not like an expert on this kind of stuff. Um, but like John Bravo just did a video on Arnold. Um, and I think he was talking about steroids. I'm going to watch it again. I watched it earlier, but I was doing something else while I was watching. I'm going to watch it again. John's videos are so good. They really honestly just the way he's really like. I don't know. It's almost like watching the news. I feel like when I watch his channel, (laughs) I don't know. I just like it. It just makes me feel like I know what's going on in the world, but it's kind of like from a different perspective. I don't know. It's, it's funny, but, um, but it was a good, it was a good video, but I need to watch it again. Cause this is, this is crazy. I can't believe this data. It's really not, not good. Here's more. Oh, this is f- oh, this is from the Department of Justice. This study. What are the risks of using steroids? A range of physical and emotional problems. Physical consequences include liver tumors and cancer, jaundice, high blood pressure, and increases in cholesterol levels, kidney tumors, fluid retention, and severe acne. Jeez. That's not fun. Emotional problems associated with steroid use include dramatic mood swings, including manic symptoms that can lead to violence... Depression, paranoid jealousy, extreme irritability, delusions, and impaired judgment. Yeah, that's not good. This is from the Department of Justice website, by the way. Their website is not very... (laughs) It looks like it was made, like... 20 years ago (laughs) their website needs a little uh makeover i I would say wow that's crazy though how many people are on steroids right now oh my goodness i don't know if they're counting i don't think they're counting trt in that either i think that's just they're they're just looking at anabolic steroids they're not looking at trt Because a lot of people don't really consider that to be like steroid steroids. I don't know. It's a whole... I don't know. There's all these like natty or not or natty or whatever. It's like... I don't know. Like there are some people that it's like you look at them and you're like, yeah, they're probably on steroids. But I'm not going to go be like, oh, you're on steroids. You know, like... I don't really care enough. Because a lot of people are open about it now. Some people aren't. You know, like Liver King. (laughs) But it was so obvious. It's like, I almost wonder if he was just like playing a joke on all of us. Like, hey, let's see if these people believe if I'm natural. 
Let's see if I can convince the world that I'm not on steroids. And they'll buy my beef liver or whatever the heck he was selling. Still crushing it on Amazon, by the way. Liver King. Still crushing it. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Yeah. So that's what's going on in the world. Good times. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Oh, I've been listening to... Trying to listen to more like local St. Louis music. So if you have music, if you have like a new song that comes out or something you want me to check out, um, just send it to me. Um, and I'll listen to it. You know, I'm going to be... I'm not going to talk about music on my podcast unless I actually do like it. So... If I talk about it, then I, that means I actually legitimately do like it. So a couple artists that I've been listening to lately, Nando STL. I finally checked them out. I've been seeing stuff about them for a long time and I never really listened to their music. Um, I'd seen videos of them. So like I've, I knew they were good. I just never really like sat down and like listened to it. So this time I like literally sat down and listened to it and I played it in my car. So Yeah. Uh, but it's really good. Like their music's really good. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. So you got to check it out. Nando STL, N A N D O S T L. That's that's their name, and they're really good. And then uh, John Joseph, who I actually went to high school with. I don't know. He might have been like a year younger than me or something, or a year older than me. I don't know. I don't remember. But um, he just came out with a new song, and I listened to it, and. I had listened to, I think I had listened to his stuff like in the past, but it had been a while since I had um, checked out what he was doing with his music. So I went ahead and checked it out. And um, and his name is spelled J-H-N-J-S-P-H, by the way, if you want to check him out. But he just dropped a new song and it's it's a vibe. It's a vibe. That's all I'm saying. So uh, St. Louis has some good, good music, especially hip hop. The St. Louis hip hop scene's always been popping um man remember when nelly was famous remember when nelly was like like prime nelly i guess that must have been like the year like 2000 oh what a time to be alive that was something something special when nelly was like like when country grammar came out and all that good times because he was always like repping st louis in his like music videos and (laughs) man i feel like that was just like such a better time like for st louis like st louis felt good i don't know i was so young though because i was born in 1995 so i didn't really get to like experience that as an adult I just wish I don't know I wish we could go back to those times but like I want to experience it now so I don't know I wonder if there will be like another um star like in hip-hop that comes out of St. Louis that like has like that well I guess uh Metro Boomin but I don't think he really claims st louis quite as much as nelly did like nelly was like all over the place with like or not all over the place but he was like decked out with like st louis like he like he made sure people knew he was from st louis and he he talked about he made references to st louis in his songs and stuff so um yeah so it was i don't know it was cool we had like community i feel like we had more more community i guess but i don't know good times good time but i guess now things are different because of the internet so that's that's the main thing like now you can be from st louis and you can get famous without having to you know do all the local stuff you can just get famous from the internet which is cool i mean because some some styles of music maybe not they're not as popular in st louis but maybe in other parts of the country or even other parts of the world you have more success so i think it just depends on your genre um but hip-hop's always been big in st louis and i think it always will be and i love it i don't know but i worked at a recording studio for a little bit so i got to kind of get a little 
um, insight on the the hip hop scene in St. Louis, which was really cool. It was a cool experience. Got to meet Bone Thugs and Harmony. That was dope. Yeah, that's where I met Patrick Vega, who just fought, and he's now eight and zero. He's still undefeated. He just uh, he won by TKO, so that was awesome. That was at the fights that I went to last night. Yep. Good times. So, yeah. But that, I think, is going to do it for me tonight. I I need to get some editing done. And then hopefully go to bed at a decent time. We'll see. (laughs) But anyways, thank you guys so much for listening, watching, however you're consuming this podcast. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate. And I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm going to try to... I got a little behind with my guest episodes. So I'm going to have to reschedule some um, guests that were supposed to be on before. But, man, things got all crazy. Not even just on their end, but also on my end, too. Like, just with my schedule constantly changing. So, um, I'm always switching things up. And, yeah, I need to stop saying yes to so many things is what I need to do. But... <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for listening to me today or watching. Um, And I will see you next week. Bye.